All right. This is a very familiar site to me, because this is the site in which that I first got my ass handed to me super hard, and my very first Genshin video, which is me trying to fight Andreas uh, when I was super undercated. <laughs> so, the reason why I'm making this video today is rather simple. A lot of the time I see people actually still struggling with this fight, and I always have to wonder why, until I realize that a lot of people are trying to overcomplicate this fight when it doesn't need to be. For example, a lot of comments that I see in my friend's video by the name of Sun Wei, I always defer to him to free to play guides for Genshin Impact. He has gotten a lot of comments on his videos where people seem to make sure that this fight is the most, like, calculus 5000 thing they've ever done. Where, like, uh, there's a specific comment that I remember that if you were to bank on the fact that elemental resonances double cryo is that you increase the crit rate against opponents that are frozen or affected by cryo by 15%. What they were trying to do is that they wanted to keep Chung Yun and another cryo unit inside their party, and they wanted to fight Andreas with Xiao. But because they're immune to anemo and cryo damage, they wanted to build Xiao completely physical because they thought there was just no way that they could fight Andreas without the double cr the crit rate even though that he isn't affected by cryo anyway, so I'm not sure like where they got that from, but okay. But regardless, it seems like a lot of people are trying to overcomplicate this fight, and it really isn't that difficult because of the fact that there's three things you need to do with this fight. You need to let Andreas do damage to himself, you need to do damage to Andreas at range, and you need to make sure that you have your bursts ready for when you can have some invincibility frames. Uh, this is not the fully proper way to do it. Soon Wei's video actually has the proper guide in which that he studies all the movement patterns and attacks made by Andreas himself. He is a lot better than I am and a lot better than the majority of players out there. And I strongly suggest that if you want a proper guide for it, go to him instead. But for this guide, I wanted to make sure that I wanted to get across the point that it isn't very difficult to fight Andreas and you can do it completely free to play. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do now is take off both Noel and Shang Li, because you can do this with uh, Traveler and Amber. My Traveler is not very good. He's using Festering Desire. His artifacts are Noblesse and Resolution of Sojourner, but they don't have too much levels on them, like level 4 Cup, level 4 Mask, 12, 8, 0. Uh, Constellation at 5, but you only really need Constellation 2, and don't forget, you get Constellations for free for a Traveler. Uh, the majority of these either come from the story quest or straight up buying it in the Lyra shop with your little geo coins. Talents are not that high either, 466. Six. And Amber is the same way. Amber, she is using the Sharpshooter's Oath. Uh, I suggest the Slingshot, but I'm just going to keep it standard and use the Sharpshooter's Oath. Uh, the artifacts are Berserker and Martial Artist, which are very unideal for Amber. Uh, why do you need crit rate? I have no idea, but okay. Uh, you have uh, level 0, level 8, level 4, elemental mastery, like what am I doing, right? Power damage bonus, no add-ons to this at all. And crit damage, it is a little bit high up there, but again, Andreas has no weak spots. So, uh, you can't bank on hitting the headshot every time and getting a damage bonus. Constellation 0, talents are at 3, 2, 2. And this fight is completely doable. I'll do it right now. And remember, the three things you need to do with this fight. Let Andreas do damage to himself, do damage at range, and make sure you have your burst saved up. Let's go. Also, if you spam the character switch at the very beginning of it, you can move around in the preparation phase. But anyway, let's just put a rock right here. All right, and aim, and just start shooting him. And I'm not even kidding, this is all you do. Traveler will be doing the majority of damage, but Amber is always going to do some passive DPS. Well, not passive DPS, but range DPS that doesn't require you getting too close to him. Yeah. Charge at me. Terra 
map. Now down to half health, and all you need to do in this phase is put on a rock and let him charge it. It'll do damage to him, and you just repeat this phase until the phase is over. But most of the time, if you take too long, you'll do this twice. But because I did enough damage to him to make him half health, uh, it will only make him do it once, and then he'll start second phase immediately. Alright, now we're here. He is under 50% health, and this is where you want to be careful and make sure you predict his dodge and save your stamina. Alright, let's go. You, want to, you always want to stay behind. See? And then you want to make sure that your stamina is okay, because otherwise you're going to get screwed. Let it rain. Time he swipes, just make sure to throw. dash. There you go. I only got hit once, and that's all you need to do when it comes to the fight in Andreas. And I don't think they even took more than like five minutes. Maybe at max five minutes, I'm not too sure. But yeah, look at that. Only using Traveler and Amber, and they're not even kitted very well. All you need to do, again, other than learning how to dodge, because dodging is super important because it gives you invincibility frames, uh, is let Andreas do damage to himself, do damage at range, and of course, making sure that you have some bursts in the case that you need a get out of jail free card. But otherwise, look how simple that was. Amber and Traveler is all you need, and I know that a lot of people out there, you know, may have some unlucky rolls or whatever, and they all you get is uh, characters they won't use or, aren't, or are not useful for this fight, but really, the fight is not complicated, as I have shown, because I get I use the character that comes with your email and the first character character that you meet, and they're not geared at all. So don't be afraid to use free-to-play characters, because I, I've seen enough YouTubers out there who think that Amber, Amber's potential was locked behind her constellations, whatever. That's bullshit. She is the only pyro archer in the game. So there's nobody that can do her job better than she does. And if anyone tells you that, oh, uh, Fischl can do her job better, or uh, I'd rather use Diluc, well, here's the thing. They're not the same characters. It makes me really sad that people have phased out Xin Yan, the rock and roll guitarist, because they're like, oh, she's budget Diluc. Um, no. She does not do mainly pyro damage, she does mainly physical damage, and the majority of her constellations and such revolve around her charged attacks, which makes her spin around in circles. So she is hugely underappreciated, I really wish that wasn't the case, but of course, Genshin tubers and their stands always are out here like sucking each other off because of the fact that they think they're like gods at the game or whatever, when in reality, there is no meta to follow. If you know how to play a character correctly and use them correctly, then they are good. So just because you can't apply them doesn't mean that they're bad characters. It just means that you don't need them at the moment. So that's all I have to say on the matter. Uh, don't die, kids. And don't forget, uh, Traveler is free, and so is Amber. Hell, you can probably just do the fight with Traveler, but whatever. <laughs> uh, the fight should have been a little bit shorter, but because I don't have double Geo, double Pyro, and I just did it purely with Traveler Amber. It took a little bit longer than I would like, but hey, uh, really, dodge, roll, repeat, and drop a rock maybe. Terra smash! 